today I'll be showing you how I paint this white anemone flower. I hope that you're able to follow along and find it interesting. And don't forget to subscribe, to like, and comment on this video. Let's get started. So I'm currently using a 300 GSM watercolor paper from Van Gogh. This is actually the last piece in the pad and I don't know why I have not used the last piece. So I decided that it will be a good one to use as a practice for this white anemone flower that we are currently making. This pad, um, I remember um, thinking that it's it's alright, it's a good practice um, paper, but um, I would definitely choose something else if I want uh, more serious artworks. So here, um, white anemone flower, I chose this as the subject because a lot of people were asking me about how to paint white flower. So I hope this video will be uh, interesting and that you'll learn how to render white flowers in your paintings. So now grab your favorite watercolor set and let's get ready to paint. Firstly, when painting white flowers, I want the white of the paper to shine through so I don't paint a wash of color over the drawing. This is different from when I'm painting a more colorful flower. When I paint a light wash over the flower or a light, a light color, light yellow, to make the painting brighter. But for white flowers, I don't paint a wash. So I would definitely start with using a neutral shade to add value to the work and so that overall the painting won't look flat. So I'm very careful in adding the neutral shade that I'm using. That way I can just make sure that the grooves, the shadows, the veins can be painted and it will look alive even though I'm not using a very colorful shade. So my tip is um, when you're doing this, remember to start light. So make sure that you're not using the full intensity of the neutral shade that you're using. So it's easier to just go back and reapply. So when you're doing this and you're doing the little lines, the veins, Make sure that you follow the, the curve or the shape of the petal. So when the petal here, as you can see, is um, curving upwards, that's how you are going to paint the little lines or the veins of the flower. That's to make sure that at least the, the eyes of the person that's going to look at your work is going to follow that and they're going to get that this is a petal of that flower. So again, here I am just reapplying after the first light shade is dried up. I'm reapplying the darker shade to give more depth to some of the petals, especially the petals that are at the bottom of the other petals. So the center of the anemone is a solid uh, neutral shade, so you can just Paint that and paint that first and then wait for it to dry. So here I'm starting on the second one and once again I am using first a very light shade of the neutral tint and then waiting for it to dry before I follow up with another round of a much darker neutral shade. So don't worry if you um, won't be able to get it at the first try. You can practice over and over again. I highly encourage you to keep on practicing and don't, um, don't be so stressed out if you're not able to um, do it perfectly on the first try. Painting is um, also about patience and discipline. This is a skill. It's something that you learn gradually as you keep on practicing. So it took me quite a while before I'm able to paint confidently 
So I'm sure that all of you out there, if you keep on practicing, you will come to a point that you're, you look back and you'll see all the fruits of your labor. So here I'm working on the third flower, adding the first um, light shades to the bottom of the flower. And you can see me going back to the second flower. That's because it's already dry and I can do a few more modifications. I'm still using the same shade. So basically in this piece, I'm only using two colors. So one of that is the neutral tint. And the other one is the forest green for the leaves. So um, that's why I also wanted to uh, make a video about just this, this flower because it doesn't involve a lot of colors and I think that's, uh, that's key when you're starting to just uh, do watercolor. It's important that you understand the colors that you have and all the possibilities that you can do with just a limited palette. So when I'm making the the lines, I don't um, I don't make them until the very edge of the flower. I like to keep the edge clean because the flower, the petals of the flower, is curving, curving towards the center. So you can see here I'm adding the green for the leaves of the anemone flower. So leaves are actually quite therapeutic. When you paint them, it's just a solid green for me. So I don't want to uh, make it more complicated than that. So greens. So all the leaves will be just colored one green, which is the forest green that I'm using. Oh, I forgot to mention that the palette that I'm using right now is actually um, White Knight's palette. As you can see in the video, um, it was sent to me and I haven't gotten much use of it so I thought that it'll be a nice um, nice idea to use it for this practice. I love how the paints are in half pans so it's a lot uh, more forgiving for the brush to get the, the pigments. The half pans sometimes I find it very small and it's more difficult to get the paint from half pans because they're smaller. As for these um, bigger bigger pans, I think they're they're quite nice. You can fit the entire brush on it and grab more pigments faster, and it won't damage the brush. I'm also a big fan of using only one brush for the entire painting. You can see that uh, mostly in my videos that I typically use only one brush for everything from doing washes to doing details. So um, for me, a brush has to be able to do both. It can take up a lot of water and also um, be able to do details like this brush. This brush has a very pointy tip. I'm using also a Van Gogh brush. It's a selected filament um, size 8 and I bought it also in fully book. You can also um, find more of it in my recommendations for watercolor for beginners. Here I'm adding just a tiny bit of yellow at the very tip of the flowers. This is to just give a little bit of life to it so it's not like stark white. I usually do this as um, an ending just to give a little more um, interest in my painting. I usually dab a bit of yellow on the very edge, not to all the, the petals, just on some petals which I want the viewers to catch the viewers' eyes. So here I'm using the tip of my brush to just accentuate some of the details trying to darken some of the other areas that I feel that should have more depth. And I'm using also the same brush to just carefully add the details of the anemone flowers. This is actually quite fun 
but make sure that the center of the flower is dry before you do this so that it won't bleed and spread to the white that we have carefully preserved. So thank you all for watching this video. I hope that you found it interesting and you're able to pick up how to paint the white flower. I cannot wait to see your works. Tag me in Instagram once you're done with painting and I would love to share it. And remember to keep safe, practice social distancing, and let's keep doing our artwork when we want to, when we can so that it can help us relax and keep sane. So guys, thank you. And I hope to see you again in a different video. Bye!